All right, guys. Well, welcome back. Here we are the next day. Uh, I've let the clear coat dry that I re-sprayed last night. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand this down with a thousand grit, fifteen hundred grit, and two thousand grit, and then I'm going to polish this out and get a nice reflective clear coat image on it. So, uh, like I was saying, the step I did yesterday uh, to to sand it down with four hundred was to get rid of the uh, the transition line. So sometimes you'll get a transition line in your paint when you're doing custom paint work, and that's from the buildup of. Uh, paint that you're putting on top of a background color and you peel the tape and stuff like that back. Sometimes you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get that that paint build up. Don't worry about it the first time you see it. You can knock that clear down uh, when you clear it and then uh, re-clear it afterwards and it's gonna look, give you a nice flat surface, right? So you just kinda, kinda gotta build the paint um, back up so it's all level with everything. <laughs> So I went in here and now I've, I've wet set in here. This where they're here, a thousand grit. So, uh, like if you can see up in here, this is where there was a couple of dust nibs that were in this location. They've been sanded out. Um, so what you want to do, guys, when I'm talking about sanding out a dust nib, for example, there's a part I left down here. See how that dust nib is still? It's still showing on the corners. So when you sand that fully out, like the one I had up here, it's gonna the the canvas or your panel or your car or whatever you're working on is gonna look like that. So. Uh, you just want to keep on sanding until you get those flat. I have a lot of clear on here, so I'm not worried about burning through or anything. Uh, if you've never done it before, it could be a bit intimidating. So here you can see there too, my edge where the paint built up because of how thick I put the clear on. Um, it's thicker on the edge than it is over here. That's why I've got this little clear line there. That's where the, the sandpaper is not flattened out yet. Same with up in the corner here too. You can see that section, the, the sandpaper is not flattened out yet. So uh, I'll keep going just to knock little stuff like this out, flatten up these corners and stuff. And then from this point here, uh, then I'm gonna wet sand with uh, three, th sorry, 1500 after this. So this is 1000 grit. And if you take a look, uh, my, oh yeah, it's kind of showing in a bit. You do get a reflective, it is kind of shine just a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, you can see it up on the upper right hand corner it's reflecting there um, but once you do, you do this with 1500 and 2000 it shines a bit more if you were to hit this with 3000 5000 it almost looks really it look, almost looks pretty shiny at that point but you know i don't have any 3000 or uh, 5000 today so i'm just going up to 2000 i'm going to polish it so uh yeah i'll go ahead here i'll get the rest of the stuff and then i'll set this camera up for uh yeah just a 15 1500 uh, um, time elapsed there so all right so just before I go back in there and do the 1500 grit so here's there where that dust nib was there guys so just wet sand it right pretty much right till it's out when it looks like this and you can move on to your next step so uh yeah this is it gonna do the 1500 So this is it guys, so the 1500 wet sand is done. Uh, so you're starting to get a little bit of shine back onto this thing here, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, so basically this stage, what you're pretty much just looking for is there, if there's any deep scratches left from the thousand of grit. Um, the camera's really not gonna pick anything up too much. Uh, let's see if I can find something. There must be something here. Uh, what about those? You can see the scratches from the cross the, the cross hatch in there, but uh, it can't really pick anything out on the camera here. But just basically look for, for any deep scratches that might be there from the 1000 grit sandpaper. Uh, if you see something that's pretty deep, uh, just go back over with 1500, 1500 will take care of that. So uh, from this step here, I'm gonna go to 2000 after 2000 and start polishing. So guys, this is wet sanded with 2000, so if you can see, 
uh, like on the reflection there uh, you can see like the wood stands I have here set up on the right hand side of the shop uh, you can see the two lights that are above my work my workplace and you can see if I pull the camera here uh, how straight those are and they're so that's what wet sanding, wet sanding will do is they'll knock all those those lines out so that you get a nice reflection like you can see my tripod sitting there reflecting there too same with the clock on the wall and this is wet sanded with 2000 grit sandpaper so the next step here is to polish it out and that's where you're going to really notice a huge difference once you start hitting that uh, once you get past the, the initial stage of polishing and you get into that stage that starts hiding all the, the fine scratches, it, it makes a huge difference. So guys, that'll be the next step we do here. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, get the polisher out and do a three-stage polish on this panel here. And yeah, get a nice glass reflection out of this, uh, you know, om Omni-Clear. So yeah, I'll show you guys uh, how I do that step there uh, right away. So guys, this is the first uh, first stage of the polish here. So what you want to look for when you're doing this here too, uh, I just left some some spots just so you can kind of see. Uh, if you take a look at this light and just follow it up on the screen. So in the dust trail there, uh, it's not going to show it. Maybe I can get it to show it down here. Uh, there a little bit. So if you take a look at that light now, you can catch those scratches it's seeing. So there's just a little bit of 2000, there we go. Uh, you can kind of see them following that, uh, that light there. Uh, there's just a little bit of scratches left on that uh, from the 2000 grit wet sand. So see if I zoom in, maybe it'll pick it up. No, it's just reflecting the light. But uh, yeah, so there's just a couple of scratches left from the 2000 grit uh, wet sand paper there. You can kind of see them in that section really good. There we go. Uh, so that's kind of what you're looking for. You just want to get rid of most of those. So when you go on to your next step, uh, it's going to be pretty pretty easy. It's just taking away minimum stuff, right? But you can see this is the first pass with the polisher now after the wet sand. So you can even take a look here. I'll show you. See that white box that's on the top corner? I'll zoom in. And right now you can almost read what that says, except for the camera went out of focus. There we go. But you can you can read the brand and everything else. So that's just so this is on the paint, right? So this is uh yeah, this is just what wet sanding and polishing will do. Like that's a crisp reflection of something that's on the top shelf way over there, right? And I'm getting that reflection off here, like you can see all the all the parts. This is only first pass, so the more passes you do with the different stages. It's just gonna bring that depth in and it's just gonna make your, your finished product look that much more immaculate, right? So um, I'll go, yeah, I'll just quickly get those out and then I'll throw out my next pad, which will be a green cut polish pad uh, with that V36 compound from Chemical Guys for the second stage.
Okay guys, so this is the second stage here. So if you can see, <clears throat> now you can really see that reflection there. Um, there we go, clear that up. So that's on, the, that's on the painting right now. So you can see the reflection of all the stuff that's on the shelving. So at this stage here, uh, the only thing you should be left with now is I'll see if I can pick it up on the phone. See, see how there's kind of these, these little halo lights that follow my other cell phone here? That's the only thing you should be left with after the second stage. There's going to be this, uh, there's going to be these little halo lights. So the next step is going to mostly take care of those. And the fourth step that I do will definitely take care of those if there's any left. So this should be the only, the only kind of scratches left on your, your panel after the second stage. Just these really, these little halo, halo, uh, halo scratches, which if you put this out in the sunlight, uh, you, they're also called buffer trails as well. So you'd be able to see those. Especially on black, you'll notice them. On a color, as you can see, the color you don't notice them as much. But uh, but yeah, that's the only thing you should be left with. Uh, should be these little halo halo lights or halo scratches there. So anyway, I'll set up the the third step. The third step mostly take care of those, and the fourth step that I do uh, definitely takes care of those. So there's none of that at all. Um, and, but yeah, this is just like I was saying, guys take a look there like especially where you can see my tripod and stuff clear this camera up here Let's see if I can there we go but there's the reflection I'm getting right off this panel there now so if you can remember when I did the first coat of clear how that was really orange peeled when you take the time to wet sand it like this is the result you can get from your projects so uh, I'll set this camera up for the third the third stage and I'll go from there Okay guys, so this is after the third the third step there. So you can see uh, those halo marks, they're gone there now, so. Oh, a little bit more here. You can kind of see some right here, so I'll go back over this section here. If you can see what I'm talking about, see where they're pulling up there on the side of the, uh, the Plymouth logo. So I'll go back over to get those, but uh, you can see over here, um, these are all gone there now. So that's the third stage. That's what the third stage will do. This fourth stage will just fill in any micro, any fine micro scratches and the other layer just protects it. So anyway, I'll get on to that and uh, set this up for the fourth stage. So guys, that's it there. So you can see <clears throat> all those halo marks are gone. And then this is the last stage. Yeah, so this is how it turns out. Like I was saying, Omni Clear Coat is only $120 a gallon. Um, but with the wet sand and polish, this is the uh, the result that you can turn out on your, your, your work. So even when you take a look here, so the reflection that I'm getting here, you can even read the fine print that's on the bottle off the reflection here. I'm trying to get that camera to focus here. Not gonna do it again. There we go. But yeah, there you go. So this is the reflection I'm getting off the, this is the reflection right here I'm getting off the panel. So you can take a look. So guys, that's it. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, you know, thanks a bunch for watching. Uh, anytime I got some more airbrush projects, I'll, yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing here in the shop. And yeah, once again, just to show you, 
So yeah, there's the reflection here. You can see uh, my 58 art hanging up there. That's the next thing I got to wet sand and polish because I never got a chance to do that because I didn't have a shop until now. So, um, but yeah, you can see all the details here too. Uh, in my tripod that's sitting there for my camera. You can see stuff like how many screws there are. You can even see little things like that, that smudge that's on the ceiling. There's all these different reflections and stuff now that this picks up. But like I was saying, you wet sand and polish something after you're done with it, you're going to end up with immaculate results regardless of what kind of clear coat system you're using. So... Uh, thanks again guys for watching stay tuned and I'll be posting up some more uh, uh, some work videos